to maintain efficient and tidy documents for both yourself and the HMRC, you can complete the following steps. Number one, purchase a leave arch file, sticky labels and plastic wallets. Number two, write the 12 months of the year on a individual label and place on 12 wallets. Step three, ensure the first month in the folder is the business start month. So if you started trading in the month of April, it would start off as April. Number four, ensure all receipts or invoices are within that specific plastic folder. You could also print off a bank statement to show the income as well, which again will keep everything together. If you have many transactions, this is a simple way to track figures for the spreadsheet. So here we're going to make a start on creating the actual profit and loss spreadsheet. So this can be used to help you with your self-assessment form, which you'll be submitting at the end of the year. Now I've just opened up a standard spreadsheet just on Microsoft Excel and I've got three tabs at the bottom. We've got income, expenditure and profit and loss. Now you can colour them like I have done here, purely because of the OCD side of myself. That is the only reason to why I've done it myself, but again, um, you don't have to colour it but it can make it quite easy. At the top of the page I have put the, the business name for example, so I've just put here the YouTube channel name, profit and loss and again copy that across all of the pages. First of all we're going to start off with the income page. Now on the left hand side you will have to put um, each month and start it off with the month that you started trading. So if you started trading in again April you then start it at that month. So let's drag it down, you can start off with the first two months, highlight them then drag them down in the corner like I did there to make it quicker. Add the total sign again so you know the total income that's coming with the business. So it's going to centre it here and make it look nice and pretty. Now there's two ways that you can do it. If you have both cash income and sort of bank and box income, you can split it up. If you just want to account for the total income for that month, you can just do one one simple column. But for as an example for today, because it's slightly more complex, only slightly, we're going to do a cash and a bank income. So We'll just quickly populate some numbers here. Again, nothing is exact on my spreadsheet because it is purely an example, but please make sure that you reference this to the bank statements and to the cash income that's coming into the business. So let's quickly speed things up a bit. Again, we don't want to don't just sit waiting for too long while watching the video. So let's quickly speed that through. And again, just make sure that all of the amounts are correct. And what you can do is what to quickly add up is you highlight them all up and then in the top right hand corner auto sum, that'll add that up. And again, just for the next side. There we go, so that's the total income for both the cash and the banks. That segments it down for yourself. So now I'm going to add them both together to get the whole income for the uh, for the business. So simple, enter, click on the cell, plus, and then uh, click on the other cell. And that's um, added them all together. Highlight all of the cells, go on to currency and change it to British, if you change it to uh, Great British Pounds. Again, just makes it look a bit neater, a bit tidier. So there we have the income side of the spreadsheet. I'm just going to put in, again, just shortcuts just so I know um, monthly income total that I've put on there. And on the expenditure, I'd have uh, monthly expenditure total. Um, again, it's just for my own little reference. So we're going to start off with the expenditure page now. Instead of going horizontal, uh, instead of going vertical, sorry, we're going to go horizontal in regards to the month. So again, I've started off with the first two months highlight them and drag them across so I've got the full 12 months of the year. Now I should have put a little gap in there so I'll just insert a cell just so we can slide that in. And within the section every type of expense that you use within your business will be typed in here. So I'm just going to put the main types um, of expenditures that you are going to get within a business. You know, chances are it's going to be utilities, going to be petrol, gas, um, going to be stock, going to be produce, going to be possibly contractors. Um, if you're a physical bricks and mortar business, 
um, or even then a digital business could have a web developer or a marketing department. The reason I'm doing it this way is so that you can constantly add new entities further down you go and um, vertically. Again, you don't want to be getting clogged up with time while going to the side because it'll be hard to keep a track of. So just go down and it'll just make things quicker and easier to keep track of. So again, we'll quickly speed this up a bit just so again you're not, not sat watching for too long. Again, just make sure that all of your expenditures Again, at the start, where I mentioned putting the even individual receipts and invoices in that month, this is where you can add it within the spreadsheet. And again, it makes it a bit easier and a bit quicker for yourself to add everything up in total. So I'm just going to put a few cells down so it allows me for space above if I do need to add any other expenditure within the business. So we've got the total. Again, highlight, auto sum, so that everything adds up together. And then I'm just going to drag that across so then we get exactly the same formula going across each and every month. Again, you could do it manually, but this is just much quicker, quicker option. And again, we've got the total of each individual month for the expenditure, and then we're going to have the overall total of expenditure for the business, which again um, is essential to know in regards to profit and loss and for your self-assessment form at the end of the year. If you do want to put a bit more information for your own reference on a specific amount of money, you can click on there, go into review, add a new comment. So you can see in here we spent more money on, again, a plumber, bill the joiner. A bit more information just for your own reference or if you're sharing it with anyone else within the business or an accountant, for example. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, I'm just quickly changing, changing the letters there, just so I don't get too confused with the total sign. Again, purely for my own reference of what I use it for. And again, we'll just quickly get the total now of the total expenditure of each and every month throughout the year. Now there um, are many ways that you can do a profit and loss spreadsheet. I just find this is the easier way because it clearly segments each individual month so you can go into it in more detail rather than just seeing the be all and end all at the end of the year. So again just type in total in here, highlight all the numbers and I'm going to click auto sum so I get the whole amount of all of the, uh, all of the cells and I'm just going to quickly drag and drop that into the cell that I want to view it in. Again, purely for decoration. And again, purely for decoration, going to change it over to the English currency. Just, uh, just makes it look a bit more professional overall. And finally, again, you don't have to do this, but it is good practice to just put um, just some lines above and under it, um, just so you know that, that is the total and that is the main thing that you need to look at within the actual spreadsheet. So now we get to the main profit and loss section, which is the main thing that you need to look into. Um, so you need to make sure that all of the previous statistics are correct. If they are, all you need to do is get into profit and loss, type them in on the cells, press enter, then click on the income amount total, the full total, and again on the loss, press enter, and then press on the extent expenditure total tab, and then press enter again. That will enter them in there. I'm going to merge and center, so it's just one cell merged into one, and again get the total. So this is the uh, if the business has made money, if the business has made a loss. So we're going to do equals, click on the income first, it has to be the income first, minus the expenditure, so minus the loss section. So as you can see here, the company has made profit. If you're going to be a sustainable business, you're going to hope to actually get gain a profit each and every year. If it's the opposite and you're making a loss, chances are you're probably not going to last too long in the business world. Yes, chances are you probably will make a loss in the first few years, but going forward you can't constantly do in this, again, basic business. Um, so again, just having a look through all the sales and the entities, and again moving it to um, to British Pounds, again, so it just looks a bit neater. And again, I'm going to call the coordinator just for a quick ease of use, but I'll always have the profit on the left and loss on the right just for, again, standard practice of how most things are completed.
and let's make that the nice blue of what we have on the profit and loss tab and get rid of that box and there you go that is um, that is a profit and loss spreadsheet everyone again you can use it for your self assessment forms um, I'm going to mess around with a few with a few of the tools just to show how everything is linked together so we can get rid of the whole section of the bank section as you can see in the bottom right hand corner in the total that has changed considerably um, we will again change that to zeros and change the amount overall and if you look back onto the profit and loss side of things um, it, it will say that we've made a loss overall so you can see there it's minus just on the side and we've made minus money so we've made a loss in that financial year this document is ideal for a self-assessment form and again for your personal records so you can look into sort of cost cuts and again for making a more sustainable and efficient business overall so I do recommend when you do save it just save it by the financial year so it's just file and save as and then you'd call it Joe Bloggs Joinery um, profit and loss spreadsheet 2015 till 2016 or April 2015 to April 2016 but um, there you have it YouTube if there are any questions please document it below and I'll be happy to help thank you very much for watching